So the CBC thought it would be good fun to lampoon the Catholic Mass, a sacred ritual for millions of Canadians. Take a look. Canadian Cardinal Mark Ouellette is now considered one of the papal front runners. Some Catholics are concerned about how a Canadian Pope might change the church. For example, take a look at this Canadian Mass. But just to be safe, sorry Lord. Sorry Lord. Sorry Christ. Sorry Christ. Sorry. Sorry. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I think we are done here. <laughs> In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, take it easy. Amen. Now, to someone who doesn't understand what a Catholic Mass is, that's pretty funny. I mean, instead of drinking wine and eating a wafer, they were drinking Tim Hortons and eating Timbits. Get it? Canadian, right? And maybe if a Canadian becomes the next Pope, that's what Catholicism will be like. <laughs> now, the comedian involved there, Sean Majumder, is Hindu, so he, he probably doesn't understand Mass. And for believing Catholics... Uh, in the sacrament of the Mass, the wafer becomes the body of Christ and the wine becomes his blood. It's called the doctrine of transubstantiation. In the Catholic faith, the Eucharist isn't just a symbol of Christ, it actually becomes him. Now, either you believe that or you don't, and Catholics do. But Majumber isn't Catholic, and the CBC is an anti-Catholic broadcaster, so have at her, boys, right? Now, this led to a complaint against the CBC by Joanne McGarry of the Catholic Civil Rights League of Canada. Let me say that I believe in freedom of speech, and I do not believe in the counterfeit human right not to be offended. And frankly, this skit was a lot less offensive than most of the anti-Christian, anti-Catholic crap that the CBC churns out. I mean, you might even say that the show This Hour Has 22 Minutes is obsessed with the church. Not a week goes by where they don't mock it in some way. Spend a moment on YouTube and you can find a dozen. I mean, take a look at this. I fear I must punish the bishop with the church's strongest punishment. I must move him to another diocese and make him an archbishop. The church has zero tolerance for this behavior. But if you are a priest with a hobby, please get a username and a password on your laptop, okay? <laughs> also, if there's a folder on your desktop titled child porn, you know, right click on it. Give it a new name like work stuff. Hi, Larry. Look. Uh, McGarry has written to the CBC before when they did a skit with a woman portraying Jesus' wife interrupting the Last Supper, saying that Jesus spends too much time drinking with the boys. Look, it's almost as if the writers of 22 Minutes are trying to get back at some strict nuns at Catholic school or something. Now, I I've got four thoughts on learning of this little quarrel. The first is, I don't think the Catholics should have to pay for the privilege of being mocked. I mean, I don't believe in censorship or banning offensive things. I mean, ignore it or change the channel or write a letter of complaint like McGarry did, but neither do I believe that people should have money taken from them against their will to insult them. And yet that's precisely the problem with a government-run media company like the CBC. Canada's millions of Catholics can't actually ignore or even boycott the CBC. But my second point, and a very obvious one, is to imagine if the CBC would replace the Catholic Church in this sketch with, oh, I don't know, let me see, uh, a Muslim mosque maybe? Nothing too heavy duty, all in jest, you see, but to mock a central tenet of the Muslim faith, like the Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca, just to pick something, you know, have a Tim Hortons right there in the Kaaba in Mecca so that the Muslims going around in circles could stop for a quick coffee. Or I don't know, if we're talking about food, why not poke fun at the Muslim prohibition of pork? I mean, maybe something about Canadian bacon or the Tim Hortons sausage breakfast or whatever, nothing heavy duty. I mean, I'm not even talking about showing those Danish cartoons of Mohammed, which aren't even really heavy duty. They just violate the belief held by some Muslims that it's against the rules to depict Mohammed at all, not even in a bad light. So I'm not even saying I wonder if the CBC would have someone portraying Mohammed, even in a fun way, like Mohammed drinking coffee, because I know the answer. Of course they wouldn't, because then there would be, I don't know, assassination attempts on Shama Jumder, like the dozen or so terrorist plots in Denmark against the newspaper that published those Danish cartoons of Muhammad and against the cartoonists themselves. No, Catholics are safer. They'll just send you a nice but firm letter and maybe pray for you. Uh, my third point's pretty obvious. Look at the comedian here. It's our friend Sean Majumder, who just four months ago went on the CBC National to condemn Canadian Forces veterans who at mess hall one night had a little skit blowing off some steam making fun of Osama bin Laden's dumber brother. Take a look. You infidels are not too bright. 
I have one very good friend, Binder Dundat, who works in the customs of the Vancouver airport. Listen, that's about as funny as a CBC skit, I thought. I like the name Binder Dundat. And remember, these were Canadian soldiers just back from Afghanistan, a tour of duty, where they were trying to kill and trying not to be killed by al-Qaeda terrorists. But Majumder said, that's not funny. Remember this? You cannot compare what that was to anything like 22 Minutes or, or any other, you know, stand-up. Uh, because I think it's, uh, they're doing it in the workplace where they are military personnel that are not paid professionals as stand-ups or as comedians. <laughs> I get it. So Sean Majumder and the CBC have the special professional skills to mock the Catholic Church, but our own Canadian forces can't make fun of Osama bin Laden because that's insensitive. What an idiot. What a hypocrite. But look, here's the most important thing. As you know, last week, Canada's Supreme Court ruled in a unanimous decision that the government now has the power to censor you, to prosecute you, to fine you, maybe even to jail you, if you publish or broadcast something, quote, likely to expose a person to hatred or contempt, unquote. Now, that's pretty vague. And I'm not sure that Tim Horton's clip does that. I think it just mocks and derides a particular Catholic belief and ridicules a serious 2,000-year old ritual. And then you could say, hey, well, fair comment, or that's satire, or grow up and get a life. But that's the thing. The court didn't say those things. Our Supreme Court said the opposite. In last week's Whatcott case, it specifically said that the traditional legal defenses, hell, the traditional common sense defenses, don't apply. Truth, fair comment, making a joke, whatever, they're irrelevant, said the court. The only test now is a person's feelings. Did you hear hurt their feelings enough? Doesn't matter if what you said was true or fair or a joke or whatever. Just if, and, I, and I'm serious here, just if you hurt someone's likelihood to become, and I'm quoting now, self-fulfilled. Do you think I'm kidding? That phrase, self-fulfillment, appeared no less than nine times in the court ruling last week. The word feelings appears 12 times in the court ruling. You won't find the words self-fulfillment or feelings anywhere in our Chart of Rights or anywhere else in our Constitution or actually in any Constitution in the world. It's a new age concept, something that a social worker or a school guidance counselor might talk about, maybe Oprah Winfrey. But that has now been injected into our laws by our highest court and actually put on par with real rights, like freedom of religion and freedom of speech. If you think I'm kidding or I'm taking something out of context, let me quote to you from the ruling, and I quote, hate propaganda opposes the targeted group's ability to find self-fulfillment, unquote. And while hate speech may achieve the self-fulfillment of the publisher, it does so by reducing the participation and self-fulfillment of individuals within the vulnerable group. And finally, the code must be interpreted and applied so as to only prohibit communications involving, quote, extreme feelings and strong emotions. Now, did that Tim Horton sketch oppose Catholics' ability to find self-fulfillment? Did it reduce the participation of Catholics in the world? Did it cause, quote, strong feelings? Those are stupid questions, aren't they? Those are, those are childish questions. Those are irrelevant questions in a free society. Those questions are not found in our Charter of Rights. But our Supreme Court says they're very relevant.